Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Welcome as we gather, although separated, to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. As we come at the end of Easter week, a time when many of us have been thinking and praying about different meetings people had with the risen Jesus. We come today to one that for us at St Thomas's means a lot in particular, as for the first time our patron Thomas meets Jesus in the upper room and worships him as Lord and God. And so as we celebrate the joy of Easter, we're going to sing the first of our hymns today, Jesus Lives. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. And for a moment we keep silence, to open our hearts to God in the light of his risen love, before we confess our sins to him. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, 
have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We answer God's forgiving love with words of praise. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayers. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. Let's pray. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. And now we hear the first of our readings as Gwen reads from the book of Acts. The reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14 to 32. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In that sermon that Peter spoke on the day of Pentecost, he faced the reality of what had happened in Jesus' death, but also the glorious reality that Jesus was alive. It's important that in our worship and our praise, we recognise both how things are at the moment and our hope that they will not always be this way. And so we're going to sing a couple of songs now. First, He is Lord, and then one that I love which expresses trust in difficult times and worships God in the middle of it all. Faithful one. Let's sing.
salvation. You lift us up when we are down. And so we pray, Lord, renew our hope and trust in you in the midst of difficult times. Support us. Encourage us. Enlighten us and enliven us with your spirit and your love. Amen. And now we hear our reading of the Gospel as Steve reads to us from St John chapter 20. A reading from the Gospel according to John chapter 20. When it was evening on the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with him when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Closed doors are all too familiar these days. Even for those of us who do go out still to essential occupations, we come back home and the door is shut, locked. Sometimes with a sense of relief at being safe, protected from an outside world that seems risky. Perhaps more than ever before, many of us are appreciating something of what those first disciples experienced. As they gathered in that upper room. But that evening that we heard about, that first Easter evening, they discovered something important that matters just as much now as it did then. That's this. Closed doors don't keep Jesus out. Closed hearts, closed minds, can stop us from experiencing his presence, recognising him, hearing his voice. But closed doors are no obstacle to Jesus. And that's just as true now as it was then. Now at St Thomas's we know the story quite well. After all we think often of Thomas and this picture is one that shows 
She's meeting Thomas in part two of that story. After all, Thomas wasn't there that first Easter evening when Jesus came. For some time he just had to rely on what others told him. And it may be that for some of us, especially if we've perhaps discovered or rediscovered our Christian faith, or are still just wondering about Christian faith during this time of lockdown and isolation, that we feel that we've missed something by not being part of the church sooner. Well, the good news is that Jesus doesn't leave us behind. He comes back and he draws Thomas, just like the other disciples, into the same life, the same fellowship. And perhaps if you're discovering or rediscovering faith, then when we can get together in church, you might want to come and spend a bit of time in front of this window and thank Jesus for reaching out to you, not leaving you behind. But for today, I'm not thinking as much about Thomas as about part one of the story, that first Easter evening. Now it had been an incredible few days. On Thursday, in the evening, the disciples had gathered at a table. They celebrated the Passover with Jesus and he'd given them the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, what became for us the Holy Communion, a sign by which to remember him through years to come. But then they scattered as he was arrested. And then on the Friday, just two days earlier, they'd seen him die in anguish and in triumph under a darkening sky of thick clouds. Yesterday on the Sabbath, they had gathered in hiding, trying to make sense of what had happened, while still being terrified that they might be next on the chief priest's hit list. Then this morning, it had all gone crazy. Early on, some of the women disciples had gone to Jesus' tomb to anoint his body to begin a proper funeral. But they'd come back saying that when they got there, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Peter and John had run down to the tomb to check and they'd found it empty as well and the grave clothes folded up and laid out. And Mary Magdalene had stayed there. And when she'd come back a bit later, then she'd been overjoyed, overflowing with excitement saying that Jesus was alive, she'd spoken with him, she'd touched him, and he was coming to be with all of them. And then just a few minutes ago, a hammering at the door announced the arrival from Emmaus of Cleopas and his wife, who'd run the seven miles back in the darkening evening to share the news that Jesus had been with them in their home. And that on the way there, he'd spent the afternoon explaining the Old Testament to them. And just as they were trying to make sense of all of this, in that crowded room full of breathless disciples and excited people, Jesus was there. The door was locked, but that doesn't keep Jesus out. He's there. And he brings four things with him. First, he brings peace, shalom, a wonderful word, which on one level is simply a greeting, but carries so much more. And especially from the risen Lord Jesus, then it carries the sense, may you be right with God, right with the world, right with yourself. A deep peace that comes not from how things are outside you, but from how they are within, from knowing that God is in whatever you're facing with you. That's what Jesus has achieved for us at the cross and by defeating death, that we can be right with God, right with the world and right with ourselves to have true peace, shalom. That's the first thing. The second, he brings a mission because God's peace is not about sitting down and relaxing, taking it easy because 
God's okay with us. Jesus sends his church, the first disciples and us, into the world to share this shalom peace. He talks about it as above all being to do with spreading forgiveness, giving people the chance of new beginnings. Now we don't make for people or gain for them forgiveness or peace with God, with the world, with each other. We don't need to, that's what Jesus has done. But he calls us to be part of making that real in the world. It's a bit like a composer, say Beethoven, who wrote these incredible symphonies and other bits of music that can lift us and inspire us and comfort us. But until what Beethoven has created is taken by musicians and practiced and performed together, it doesn't come to life. It doesn't affect anybody. In the same way, the peace that Jesus has won for us only becomes real to the world as we share it with them. And so to receive peace brings the mission of sharing peace. And we can't do it much just yet, but that's where we're going. The third of the gifts, well, Jesus doesn't leave us on our own to do this. He sends his spirit. Now, in these days, it's not a very comfortable image to have someone coming into a crowded room and breathing on everyone deliberately. Because we know all too well that that's how this dreadful virus can be spread. But the reason that we're wary of being breathed on by someone else is because we don't want what they might have bluntly. And when it comes to Jesus, then we want what he's got. We want his love, his life, his holiness, his strength, his closeness to the Father. We want his ability to care for others. We want the life of God himself within us, that life that was in Jesus. He breathes into us. Now we'll think much more about this in a few weeks' time at Pentecost. But between now and then, let's think and pray and open our hearts to God's Spirit, God living in us. Praying each day that the breath of the Spirit would fill us. Because we want what Jesus has got. Those are, those are the three things that Jesus explicitly gives. But there's a fourth that comes with them, and that is joy. That's not something that Jesus gives actively, but it follows on from the rest. When his disciples receive his peace, his spirit, when they're sent out to continue what he began, and above all, when they just enjoy being with him, they find joy, they rejoice. Now, like the peace that he gives, this isn't about everything being wonderful. It's not about the world all being right. At that first Easter, there was a lot that was still wrong with the world. And there's a long way for the church to go even to get started. But they rejoiced because they knew that whatever they faced, whether it was in that closed room or in Jerusalem or to the ends of the earth, Jesus was with them. Four gifts, peace, a mission, the spirit, and joy. All of these are given to us to take out to the world, but they all begin in a closed room. So if you're open to Jesus' presence in your closed room, want to take a bit of a challenge this week. Make a start on reading through the whole of John's Gospel. You see, our reading ended with John telling us why he went to all the trouble of writing it down. He said, These things are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So why not start reading John's Gospel carefully from the beginning? Give yourself a bit of time. Maybe you've got lots of time, maybe you've rushed off your feet. 
but read it and take it in and ask God to show you who this Jesus is. What does it mean for you that he is the Messiah, the Son of God? What does that look like? And what does it mean to you to have life in his name? That's why this is all written down. Not just for information, not just because it's a good story, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and believing may have life in his name. Now I'll put below the video on YouTube, I'll uh, mention on our Facebook page, a link to some articles that I wrote a few years ago about John and some other resources. But the most important thing is this, ask the Holy Spirit to breathe into you the life and the truth that he brings and then carefully with an open heart and mind read the words that John wrote down because the open the mind and the open heart what you bring but Jesus doesn't need an open door to come to you to him no door is barred in your closed room as of the disciples that first Easter. If you're ready to see him, he's there. So find his peace, his mission, his spirit, and his joy. He's with you. Alleluia, Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Now as we pray together, in the light of that confident faith, each time I say the phrase, we pray to the Father, I invite you to join in answering, hear our prayer. So in joy and hope, let us pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That though we gather in closed rooms, our risen Saviour may fill us and all his people with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That all who are isolated, all who suffer, may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter that by his power war, famine and pandemic may cease through all the world. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. That he may be with those who care for the sick and protect them in their work. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That according to his promises, all who've died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on that last day. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection 
we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you've delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for a moment we pray in silence before we draw our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. And now as our risen Lord has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And again we declare God's praise. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Blessed are those who have not seen him and yet have believed. He is our Lord and our God. We have seen his glory. The glory which he had as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Lord says to us, Do you love me? Our hearts reply, You know that we love you. Jesus says, Whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him shall never die. Yes, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now as this time of worship comes towards its close, we sing our final song this morning, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now, may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.